so apologies for the poor lighting, but in this video I'm going to attempt to demonstrate how x-ray tubes are created inside vacuum tubes. Now, this goes back to obviously 1895 when Wilhelm Kunrad Röntgen, if I've pronounced it uh, right, discovered x-rays by accident when messing with a Crookes tube. Now, I've demonstrated a Crookes tube before, but I didn't have enough voltage to put through it to actually make genuine x-rays. However, what I've got here is a little old um, sort of rectifier style tube. I think this one is basically just sort of a triode. It's got a sort of metal cap at the top, which is the, um, I think it's the anode at the top and the sort of cathode at the bottom. So I've got some solder wire around the bottom connected to a crock clip and the top metal part is connected to a crock clip. And this is attached to one of the cheap Chinese high voltage power supplies you can buy on eBay and AliExpress. And they're designed for lighting neon lights. So this will probably put a couple of kilowatts worth of um, sort of voltage into it. Sorry, a couple of kilovolts, not kilowatts. Um, it doesn't give much ampage. Um, if you get shocked by this, it's not very pleasant, um, but it's not really a horrible, horrible electric shock. Obviously, it does depend on how many amps are going in in the first place. So my very unsound way of connecting this to the um, power is, as you can see, it's crock clip there. And it is then plugged in using a red and black um, banana clip into a fused plug socket, which will then go into the wall and be powered on. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm just going to state this because there's going to be people who go, oh, this is really dangerous. Yes. Two things. Ionising radiation is dangerous, although there's not going to be very much produced by this because the power supply isn't strong enough. But more importantly, messing with electricity, especially wall socket electricity while using step-up circuitry, is actually more dangerous than radiation itself. So, you know, this is one of those, do not try this at home unless you really know what you're doing um, sort of thing, because obviously an electric shock with this could be a fatal electric shock potentially. So anyway, the purpose of this video is I have a British MD3 meter there, the Radius Scan 701A and a GMC 500 plus. What I'm going to do is turn all of those on, put them surrounding the um, sort of meter. Now there will be high voltage messing with some of these meters as well, but you should hopefully hear from it, you know, or maybe see the displays, um, the X-rays being generated. Now this doesn't work consistently using this setup because obviously it's not a proper setup. Hospital X-ray tubes are designed on purpose to produce X-ray gen X-rays generally in a very angled way and not scatter and they have very good high voltage power supplies powering them. The more power you put into an x-ray tube, basically, the more um, x-rays are generated. But in this video, I just want to demonstrate, basically, how a vacuum tube generates x-rays when enough power is put through it. So if I zoom that out, what we're going to do now is I'm going to stop the video, plug it all into the wall, set all the Geiger counters up in the ionization chamber, and then I'll see if I can get the camera at different angles so you can see them giving readings and sort of ticking away happily. Um, but as said, if you're going to try an experiment like this at home, please, please, please be very careful because, you know, more than the radiation itself, because I don't have enough voltage here to generate truly dangerous levels of radiation. Um, and I'm doing it where there's no other people or animals around in the house. You know, I'm the only one who's going to be absorbing a dose and I'm quite a bit further away from where I'm going to be filming this where I flip the plug socket on. But the point I want to demonstrate is the biggest danger here is actually an electric shock as opposed to, um, you know, getting fried by the x-rays. So without further ado, let's um, set this all up and be amazed by the power of x-rays. We are set up and ready to go. So for dramatic effect, I'm going to flick this light off. Um, you won't be able to see the MD freeze meter at the moment due to this. Um, these meters are ticking a bit more than they should be, which I think might be either residual high voltage or x-ray stuff doing it. So anyway, I don't know if you're going to be able to read the numbers on these screens very well, but let's first flick on the x-ray tube. And I've just noticed the problem. The two crock clips are too close together. So plug socket off. Let me move these further apart. There we go, that's better. Right, now let's try again. Now I'm going to bring the Geiger counters in a bit closer to the X-ray tube now, because I don't think they're picking much up from that distance. Right, attempt number two. 
it has a bit more activity now. Sometimes the x-ray tubes take a moment to warm up. What I'm going to do is do it in some short bursts and see what we get. We're definitely getting some more results now. We're getting to about 140 micro Ronkgen on the um, radio scan. Right, I'm just going to turn the light on and reposition some of these counters slightly. Right, a slightly new angle here. Let's try this. Now that's much more what I was expecting. Some of that could be due to electricity going through the power cable, but generally when you have a power surge on a Geiger due to high voltage, it makes it go to like several Ronken per hour, not, um, you know, just a bit higher in micro Ronkens. Yep, I'd say the radius scan is definitely picking up x-rays at that angle. Right, let's reposition them a bit more again and I'll bring in the MD3. Right, how I've got this position now, you can't actually see the x-ray tube because the MD3 is blocking it, but I just want to flick it on and see what happens. The MD3 is responding, so I'm going to move the camera in a moment so you can see the MD3's me uh, needle moving. But interestingly, I guess the X-rays there are so soft that it's actually com the MD3 meter itself is completely blocking the X-rays from hitting the um, radio scan. So let me just move the camera angle again. Right, I'm just going to stand back from the camera now and hit the switch. As you can see, that high voltage is definitely messing with the MD3. Um, but yeah, right, so now what I'm going to do is just move the MD3 out of the way. You can see how it had an effect. And I am going to turn this... Actually, I'm just going to put this flat there. So this might, in the high voltage might interfere with it there, but it's quite well shielded. Hey, there we go, it's definitely getting x-rays at that angle. Now eventually I'll probably end up burning out this little tube, so at that point it probably won't produce x-rays anymore. But let's just try it in this position. And it sounds like there's some residual x-rays there, so that might be quite a good spot for it. Right, here we go again. Nothing too high. And there we go. Anyway, that tube might need to cool down for a bit. So to just show it you with one last meter, what I'm going to do is now bring in the Victorine 450. Now this is going to actually be difficult to read, unfortunately, because the Vic 450 doesn't have a backlight. Um, so what's gonna happen is if I put it, for example, here, let's just rearrange the camera. Let's see if you can actually read what it says on the screen there. Uh, is that visible to the camera or not? I think it's just turned itself off now. Let's try turning it on again. It's also probably because of the fact that, you know, like I was saying, the backlight has such poor contrast on this thing. That, um... Right, I think that's on again. Yeah, there we go. That's definitely on now. Right, so that should just pop down to background radiation levels in a moment. I'm going to keep this zoomed in when I flick it on just so you can read the screen. 
So in a moment when this is warmed up it should go down to about 0 point something millironcgen per hour. At the moment what's it saying? 33 millironcgen per hour should definitely keep going down. Annoyingly I don't think there's a clear button on this you know to just like you know like a you know reset or zero button. But when it gets down to background, let me just lift it up and put it down and just see if that helps. Um, yeah, here we go. Picking it up and putting it down seems to have fixed it. Let's put that back there. So now, um, as you can see, ah, it's going back up. So maybe there is some residual x-rays there. But anyway, let's just flick it back on and see if we can get the meter to go higher. So I get into 200 odd millironcgen, although that might be interference from the tube. Then I flick it off, it should fall down. Oh look, it looks like it's going to go closer to the background reading again now. So now I'll flick it back on. Anyway, there you go. So, that's just a quick demonstration of basically how vacuum tubes on high voltages run from, through them. Uh, generate x-rays. Now, this was actually a thing with CRT televisions, um, because old CRT televisions used the cathode ray tube, um, which again is a vacuum tube, and in a cathode ray tube, if too, many, too much voltage went through it, it would produce x-rays, which is why they generally use leaded glass on CRT television screens, because of the fact that, yes, they would indeed produce x-rays if the, um, you know, actual um, sort of... Uh, levels got too high or too much voltage was put through or it wasn't a very well tuned set or whatever. But there you go, so go back to 1895, this is how Röntgen or Röntgen discovered x-rays by accident by messing around with Crookes tubes. Um, and hopefully this has demonstrated it. I know Radium Quartz or however his channel name's pronounced has been doing some very very sort of high level x-ray experiments recently. I would never want to do anything like that personally. Or power to him if he wants to do it, but you know personally Having a sort of x-ray tube give off 10 plus millironcgen for me is enough. Um, you know, and these aren't proper x-ray tubes, they're just sort of vacuum tubes. Whereas, you know, I think he's got some proper x-ray tubes now and some very good high voltage setups for him. So he can get, you know, into the sort of ronken range up to, I, I think he had 200 ronken per hour in one test. Although that would be using the DP66 he had, so that wouldn't actually be 200 ronken, it'd be less because... That was either cesium or cobalt calibrated, and x-rays are definitely not as strong as cobalt 60, for example, gamma rays. But yeah, so as said, if you do this at home, be very, very careful. If you're interested in how I did it, as said, I basically bought one of the Chinese high-voltage high sort of um, step-up type things for supplying. Um, the idea is it supplies basically neon tubes, which require very high voltage uh, to power those, and I'm just running it through that. That at least doesn't burn out. I found a lot of cheaper sort of high voltage things tend to burn out quite quickly doing this. And um, obviously your tubes might burn out. I'm sure there's sort of physics forums online you can find where people tell you what the best old vacuum tubes were for making x-rays, you know, because some old rectifier tubes are better than others. Um, but as I said, you know, I personally don't really want to make scary levels of x-rays. I'm just kind of interested in demonstrating how it works. But yeah. So hopefully this little physics video has distracted you a bit from coronavirus today. And, you know, it's the wonderful world of ionising radiation. Um, let me just try again with the MD3 before we go. Let's pop the MD3 um, a bit further away. So the MD3 is there now. Let's zoom in on the MD3. And hopefully you can see that it's sort of at the lowest level the MD3 will go. And when the x-ray tube is turned on, you can see it definitely interferes with the meter. Let's bring him slightly closer. And flick it back on again.
and we'll do one where it's as close as I can really get it to the x-ray tube. Oh, we just saw a residual reading come off there, um, but that might not have been frame. And let's um, now do one last shot and see what we can get it to do. Quite fascinating. We had, I think, it got up to three centigrade um, at one point, but that was a very short burst, and that would be per hour, not per second, whatever. Let's just try it on the higher centigrade setting, 0 to 30 centigrades. Yeah, and as you can see, that's quite consistent because it's not going off scale here. But again, some of this might be high voltage interfering with the unit. But yeah, fascinating thing nonetheless.